good. Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N, just like it says on the hat. And thanks for dropping in for a Ham Shack chat. This time we're going to explore how to make log for om WSJTX and Grid Tracker work together. In the first part of this video, we will look at how to bring your log for om database of QSOs up to date by importing from another logbook into Log4OM. Then we'll connect WSJTX to Log4OM directly, and finally we'll integrate Grid Tracker into the whole system. In the video description, you'll find the chapters listed for each of these sections. So if you need to review or just jump to a particular section, you can just click on the timestamp and the video will jump ahead. If you have any questions, suggestions, corrections, or just general remarks, you can leave them down in the comments. Tell me about it. This is my HRD logbook, and I have been using it for a long, long time. Uh, I've got 34,624 QSOs in there. I don't want to throw all of them away, and at some point in time, I will go ahead and export them all. But for now, for brevity's sake, I'm coming back here to April 27th, 2019. I moved to Ohio in 2019 by the time I got my station set up and an antenna in the air and all of that sort of stuff. It was April. So I'm going to start by selecting all of these QSOs and I'm going to go to my logbook, file, export, ADI. Now I have a choice between going with selected, which will give me just those ones that I just selected. I'm just going to do the selected ones. So now I'm going to go here and you see that I have a desktop file that is ham radio, log for OM2, and ADIFs. I'm going to name that file HRD logbook export. And I'm going to save them. And I'm going to export them. So I've got 11,706, or roughly a third of my total. So I'm going to go OK and click on Finish, and we can close the logbook. Now you might be saying, hey, I don't use HRD logbook. Well, that's fine. Just about every log I've ever used, all of these can be exported into your new log for om logbook. I'm going to come here. I'm going to go File, Import. ADIF. I'm going to click on load. It's going to pop this up and I just select that file. And now I got the import button so I'm going to do that. And you can see it's starting to process it QSO by QSO. In a second you're going to see a flash because I don't want to sit here and wait for all of this processing to happen which is kind of boring. You know, it's going to happen, right? So you're going to see a flash, and when we come back on the other side of that flash, we will have the complete log updated, and I'll show you that. So just for your information, the time of the flash was actually about 30 minutes. So you can see it takes a little while. First off, it imported every call sign. After it incorporated all the call signs, it went through and compared to its awards list and flagged each of these for certain awards. Going through the awards will be another video. At that point, it had ended its ADI file import and began the log save. So now all of these have been saved into my log. I'm going to go ahead and just X out of that. Now one of the things you'll notice is that I'm showing 5,000. That is actually my maximum value that you can set here. But as you recall, I brought in 11,000 some. Now I haven't thrown away everything over 500. The database has been updated. Every QSO you have is in your database. However, I am only displaying 5,000 of them. If you want to display less, for example, say I wanted to only display the last 100, I would set that and I'd come up here to my settings, go down to program configuration and select program settings and change this to 100. 
Then, after I would get these two numbers in agreement, I would click on Save and Apply. It would reset, and you see I only have 100. If you want to see all of your QSOs, all 11,000 of them, I would set this to zero. Back up to our settings, Program Configuration, Program Settings, zero. And there we are back on April 27th, 2019. So these are all of the QSOs that I entered being displayed. For my use, I would like to set about the last 500. Set that to 500, and I really don't need to go beyond that. Actually, 500 might even be a little much. Seems like a little bit overkill to me. And up here to Program Configuration, Program Settings, 500, Save and Apply, and there we are. My last 500 QSOs are displayed. My database includes every QSO that I imported. So that's how we export and import our QSO information in the form of ADI files from our current electronic logbooks to log for om Again, while I have been using HRD logbook for a long time, you can apply the same principles from any logbook that allows you to export ADI files. And by the way, I've never come across a logbook that doesn't let you do that. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I quite like that. I quite like that. Now we're going to show you how to directly put your logged QSOs from WSJTX, and in this case FT8, onto Log4OM. It's actually pretty simple. We're going to come up here to File, come down to Settings, and go to Reporting. You want to enter your UDP server, which is 127.0.0.1, and these are standard values used across the board. Your UDP server port number will be 2237, and you want at least these top two, accept UDP requests and notify on accepted UDP requests. Check. You may, if you wish, check this final block as well. Then I'm going to bring up my log for OM, Come to Settings, Program Configuration. Under Software Integrations, I'm going to select Connections. Then under UDB Inbound, we're going to click the plus sign. That brings up this. I'm going to name this WSJTX Direct because this is going to be strictly between WSJTX and Log4OM. Our port, which we just entered, is 2237 and the service type is going to be an ADIF message. At this point we can click on the save button that's down there and it's checked. You can have multiples of these for different things and I'll show you that in the next section. We are now all set and ready to go. I'm going to click on save and apply, shrink this down and go back to my WSJTX. I'm going to make a QSO and I'll go ahead and zap this, and the QSO's over, and I've got my pop-up block here to log this, so I'm going to click OK to log this. Now we'll pop up our logbook again, and you can see I now have N4FUR in the log. Now that we have WSJTX and Log4OM working together, we're going to take a look at integrating Grid Tracker into the operating schema. Whenever I make a video, I do a lot of research, and this video is no exception. I reviewed the user manual for Log4OM, and I watched a few, probably six, videos done by others on this subject. Another thing that I do before recording a video is to check my facts and make sure that what I'm saying actually works. In my research, I found the user manual to be of some help, but pretty minimal. And most of the videos that I watched were either out of date or just didn't give me a usable result. What happened? It didn't work. It didn't work. I suspect that most of the problems I had from watching other videos were because they were out of date. In the time since they were released, all three of our programs, log for om WSJTX, and Grid Tracker have been through multiple updates multiple times. The method that I'll be showing for integrating all of these three 
does work for me and I feel comfortable in sharing it. Help me spread the word about this video and other videos of mine by sharing. Thank you for sharing. Them with your friends and compatriots in the ham radio community, in your clubs and especially on social media. As we start off, please keep track of the order in which I bring up these individual programs. We're going to start with log for om We're going to come up here to Settings, Program Configuration, come down here to Software Integration, Connections. You'll note that we still have selected the 2237 WSJTX Direct. Now I'm going to add one. And the connection name is going to be Grid Tracker Log. The port is going to be 2236, and the service type is going to be ADIF message. And we click on this little floppy disk icon. Insert floppy disk. You got your floppy disk? And that's been added. Now we're going to add another one. The connection name on this one is going to be Grid Tracker Call. The port is going to be 2238, and the service type is going to be JT Message. Once again, we click our Save button. We're going to do Save and Apply, which will add this changed information to our configuration. And I'm going to bring up WSJTX. Under Settings in WSJTX, we're going to go to the Reporting tab. You want to have prompt me to log the QSO and clear DX call and grid after logging. Our UDP server is going to change to port 2333. You can want all three of these selected and we're going to start a secondary UDP server which is going to be port 2237. Click OK there. Now we're going to bring up our grid tracker and our call roster as well. We're going to go to settings. Under our general tab, we're going to change our receive UDP message 2333. And we're going to change our forward UDP messages to 2238, which I already have there, and we're going to enable it. Now we're going to go to our logging tab. Down here under log for OM, we're going to enable it and add our port 2236. Now I'm going to give a quick demo and if everything works right, we should be good. Down here under my call roster, I'm going to actually run this from the call roster. I've sorted this by my decibel level, so from most powerful to least. So I'm going to start by making a contact. Uh, then we'll flash forward until I get the, the WSJTX log pop-up. So I have my WSJTX log popped up here. I'm going to click OK. That ping indicates that I've logged to WSJTX. And let's go ahead and pop up and see if our KJ4EX is in our logger. KJ4EX is in our logger. And so that's a successful demonstration. That ends this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed putting it all together for you. Future videos will continue to explore the many features of log for om so be on the lookout for them. 73 until the next hey y'all. As always, I'm at your service. This has been a Hamshack Chat. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out. That's all there is.